I'm conducting business in Texas and Georgia, but have a California LLC. Uh, so I, the question here is asking, you know, with an existing California LLC, do they also need a Texas LLC and a Georgia LLC in addition to the California LLC? First off, I am not your lawyer. I'm not your CPA. I am just providing useful information that's uh, factual as far as I know uh, that you can Google anywhere. Uh, use me as a resource, not your only resource. This is not advice. This is just a guy who owns a business formation service talking about questions that we get in the chat and in comments in other platforms. Uh, so the answer to this question is kind of loaded here. This is a really interesting one. Um, first off, as a reminder, if you haven't watched the videos on uh, the, our deeper videos about LLCs, you need to know that an LLC is a state entity, not a federal entity. So uh, someone like Amazon has their domestic LLC in uh, Delaware, and then they've got a foreign, sorry, they don't have an LLC, they're a corporation. So let's use LLC and corporation interchangeably here. So go with me. Uh, so Amazon has a Delaware corporation, a domestic, okay? So the state of origin that you create your LLC in, sorry, I'm gonna use corporation. The state of origin that you create your corporation or LLC in is the domestic state, okay? State of origin, I form my LLC or corporation in Delaware. It is my domestic LLC or corporation. And then if I want to expand to Texas and I want to have employees in Texas, I then need to create another LLC or corporation in Texas. But that's not my state of origin. Delaware is where the home office, the headquarters, even if you actually headquarters in another state, the, the corporation LLC headquarters in the, in the kind of abstract mind of the LLC is in Delaware or the state of origin, the state of domestication, the domestic state. Uh, the, the, any additional states that you form in are foreign. So it's not domestic as in United States, foreign as in France, Germany, wherever. It's all within the United States. So the, the domestic is the state that you originally formed in and the foreign states are every other state that you formed in. So in this person's case, if they were to go through with this, their domestic LLC would be in California and then they would form a foreign LLC in Texas and a foreign LLC in Georgia. That is an option. They don't necessarily need to do that. Different states have different rules. California is really, really hardcore. And so if you have anybody working for you in California, like they won't even let you perform business until you get that foreign LLC or corporation filed. Hard no on that. Um, but it's a little like, there's a lot of gray area loosey goosey. It's like, well, you know, who's performing the work? Is it a, um, is it a contractor? Is the contractor have an LLC in that state and you're just hiring the contractor in another state? Then kind of, you don't need that, right? Are you physically going to another state and doing work? Then maybe, I mean, if you, are you doing a one-off job? Um, if you're doing a one-off job and your insurance company says it's okay, then, you know, why not, right? Uh, check with a, check with an attorney on this. Um, but you know, if you're just doing like a one-off job or, you know, I'm in Texas and I'm performing the work in Texas for a Wyoming company, I'm still doing the work in Texas. Um, and if you're doing one-off things like that, I don't really think the government is going to really, you know, give a lot of cares about that. Um, it's when you're actually like, performing real work for an extended period of time that they're going to want their revenue. Okay. So it's about taxes. This is all about taxes. And so if you're a Texas LLC, sorry, if you're a California, L, if you're a California LLC and you're coming into Texas for one job, that's probably a gray area. Okay. That's probably something where, you know, Texas is not going to, oh, lost my light. Um, Texas is not going to like go crazy about this. It might be a technicality, but like, is Texas gonna come after you? And like, hold your feet to the fire? No, I don't know, I don't know about that. Um, 
But if you're like performing work in Texas and Georgia on a regular basis, and that is becoming a branch, like a a home base for you, and you're really expanding. So like you've been successful in California doing tile work, and now you're going to Georgia and you're opening a store or you're doing recurring work in Georgia and you're doing recurring work in Texas, then yes, it does make sense to do that because Texas and Georgia are gonna want their tax revenue, all right? Not every state has tax revenue. Um, you know, Texas is a no-income uh, state uh, for businesses, Delaware, Wyoming, uh, Nevada. The Texas one is kind of loosey-goosey because like, it's up to $1.127 million. Over that, then you have to like, you know, uh, fill out a bunch of stuff and have expenses and whatever. But if you're making a million dollars a year in Texas, there's no state income tax from there. You still have income tax from the federal government, but the state government, not. So it is really all about the state income taxes. The states want the money that you make from within the state. So again, I, don't quote me on this, but if you're doing like a one-off job, it's probably not that big of a deal. The state's not going to know. They're not going to come after you. Um, what are they going to do? Like go across state lines and drag you back? Probably not. Um, and if it's if it's of a digital nature, like you go, you fly for a wedding and you take photos uh, in another state and fly back, you know, like there's no way to track that. So I, I could be getting in trouble right now just for like saying all the, the state governments are going to like watch this YouTube video and be like, we are holding you responsible for multi-billions of dollars that these small businesses have, you know, accumulated and are earned in our states and we didn't get the tax money. So but that's on me, not on you. So anyway, hopefully this has been helpful for you and a little bit entertaining. Uh, but that's basically kind of how that works. Um, you know, again, all you can always ta talk to a professional um, and get you know deeper advice if you're worried about it. Um, but that is kind of an overview. Um, if you like the video, like, subscribe, share with a friend. Um, uh, go to betterlegal.com and use us. If you are doing this, like this person could have actually you know bought these foreign LLCs through us, uh, which would be cool. So if you need domestications, this is called domestic. Uh, sorry, that's not called domestication. Um, if you want this or you need domestication which is another thing we can help you with all of that so go to betterlegal.com chat with us um and we'll be happy to have you as a customer uh, until the next video